black locust, which is just used as a early succession in here. We just kind of torture it, keep cutting it down, um, use the materials every now and then. And this will just be cut, cut, cut to promote this black walnut or these black walnuts and butternuts. And you can see these guys are real beauties. I'm loving these trees. I started to prune them last year. They're pretty much self pruning, but uh, 40 feet tall, pretty much. I could climb 25 feet up in these. They're starting to yield really, really well. Um, there's, I think, gonna be a number of hundreds of fruit on them again, of nuts. You can see they'll bear in two clusters of two and three. There's three, here's twos. These are, look at all these walnuts. And mm, I grew up with these in Western New York and just love them. Look at this new growth. Here's a foot plus this shoot is still raging. They leaf out so late because they're compound leaves. They're not hardy to frost. That's what I found most compound leaves are. Just like white ash. They don't want to put their leaves out early because they know the frost could hurt them. You can feel the sticky resin on them. They're very medicinal. Um, here is an early season, or excuse me, early Nanking, just getting going. Um, what we're finding with Nanking cherries is you gotta hack them back quite a bit to get them to keep fruiting. That's what it seems to be anyway. I know Mark Shepard, he just ignores his completely, he says, and keeps getting fruit, but we started pruning one back after it stopped yielding after like five to six years of good fruit, and then it started producing again, and because it, it cranked for like five years. So I'm starting to kind of keep these in the mix, keep succession planting them. They are ripe before they're super red. Oh, and they're good. They're really pretty darn sweet for a cherry. Um, the, all these rocks, by the way, look at all these rocks. They're all just from broad forking this year. And we've gotten this much rocks most years for seven years of this bed, eight years. Clay soil, which I'm actually growing to love, just keeps thrusting up rocks on a hillside in New England. It's not really part of the fun, but clay soil is awesome once you get it going. It's so fertile. Here's some basil getting swallowed. I haven't really been in the garden lately. This uh, cilantro. I was just dominating here. I'll sometimes make wide beds and just have like very strategic stepping points in the bed, but in general, I won't. We're jumping around. This is a cover crop we're gonna cut soon, side it down and put cabbage in, winter, our winter crops, like fall crops. Um, this is all med medicine, medicinals. Lemon balm, sage, motherwort, lobelius. Um, there's ashwagandha over here, yarrow, thyme, all sorts of bee plants. Look at this yarrow flowering. The bees are getting a lot of medicine here. Um, Anise hyssop, the the, herba the really aromatic flowers, I think are doing a lot for the bees. Um, we don't know for sure, but our bees seem might free. There's always pollen for them. The herbaceous perennials just keep giving. So every in-between area, we're always planting what we call RBPs, herbaceous perennials. Look at these going off this year. Um, Cornelian cherries. And they're having a great year. The first one, I'm, I was almost going to cut all these down because they're in the, this veggie garden, which really isn't a good mix to have trees in next to the veggie garden. I, mostly, I don't think. There's some benefits here and there, but uh, these are loaded this year so it's kind of interesting I think the bees are making things more fruitful here so we're just really in our third successful year of bees um, echinacea coming up oh here's a rogue black locust I had a whole I surrounded this apple over here with black locusts here are the bees over here we have 10 colonies total now um, and this was all black locusts surrounding this tree just to get it going break up soil People are like, oh, you're crazy. You're just gonna have locusts everywhere. It's your garden. Just cut it, cut it, maybe three years, then mowed it. The third year, mowed it a bunch, it's, they're gone. You know, it's funny, people get so scared of plants. Oh my God, the plants are gonna take over. You know, they're just plants, guys and gals. They're not 
you know, atomic weapons. They're not poisons. They're not, it's not, it's, they're not chemicals, you know. Be scared of chemicals. Um, these apples are doing good. I've been starting to weigh the branches down. It helps a little bit here and there, it seems. Um, but they also start weighing themselves down when they get fruitful. And, uh, yeah, here's some more fruits. This is a uh, Amer Machia, which started to grow for the first time in like 10 years this year. Just a nitrogen fixer, whatever, trying it out. Um, we'll cut it down at some point. This is, I think, an English pyramidal oak, Quercus robur. Um, something's kind of eating it. But we'll get a nice, stout bit of oak here, break up the soils, and then we'll cut it down because it's in zone one and it's somewhat south of some gardens. So we won't let it get too big. Um, but, you know, people are funny. They say, well, why do you have nut trees in zone one? And it's like, break up the soil. We got tons of room here. Um, important fall crops, the kohlrabi, parsley, kind of mid-season cabbage, or Brussels sprouts. Um, yeah, the fall crop is our most important one. That gets planted around now, sown in flats weeks ago, June, June sowing. Here's some raspberries, just a nice bonus, tasty fruit. It's nothing we put up, we don't save these. Um, but we eat fruit when it's fresh. We make meat out of it. We don't try to, try to freeze a whole bunch of fruit, except sea berry. That's worth freezing, because that's crucial medicine. Everything else is just for fun, just for taste. Sea berry is actually, keeps you healthy. The other fruit is like lightweights, lightweight stuff compared to seaberry. These guys are cranking pretty good. They don't really get any fertility um, except from the rain, which is huge. We don't put compost on these. We'll wood chip them every now and then. Mm, they are pretty good. I like black caps too, even more. It's really late in getting those going. Service berry, the birds always get all the service berry. Um, yeah. Oh, there's a Balaton cherry up there I didn't harvest, but there's more of that. This is um, black, uh, red currant. The birds usually get most of these, but we fed the birds so much with our cherries this year. I guess the waxwings have just moved on. They're like good for a while. I don't know. These are good. They're pretty boring compared to black currants, honestly. I mean, they're sweeter, not nearly as nutritive, but not nearly as wanting to grow, but they're nice to have around. It's just an ornamental um, cranberry, which can take very wet soils. The trees are growing like crazy, and we're just finishing our last of our cherry harvest, and we've just used up our compost for the year. We're moving to this situation for our compost, by the way, which is um, half-inch hardware cloth bins. And then you can keep it, if you put it on a lot of wood chips or burlap or cardboard, you can keep the weeds out of it pretty good. This is compost from the last few years. You can see, look at, look at that, look at all these worms. They love to be on top of the uh the cardboard so i'll throw this in new compost too we'll use it as inoculant all this has got wine caps trifaria throughout it um we kind of nurse that along everywhere wow this is just filled with worms um it's looking great so this is the last bit of compost from the last couple years of making it we make it slow just cold compost it keeps more of the nutrients it's lazier we don't turn it we just get years ahead and you never have to turn it so this will be next couple years of compost and then we have like four more of these bins down below this is the current one and uh yeah here's a new current planting we just put in in this spring these are growing pretty good you can see this is what you should get from a current first year in the ground you should really get a foot to two feet um, here's blueberries coming along they're not there yet but they're getting pretty plump these are a later summer blueberry. There's a few earlier ones here. There's some others that are getting ready. Chicken go.
Get at you. Here is a three-year-old current plot. One of our probably one of the three areas we have black currants. And this was all nothing was growing. Nothing would grow here. These currants were here for years, uh, but not on mounds. It's high water table here, like spongy high. I mean, look at all the uh, buttercup. This tells you it's perennially wet. And the leaves are an awesome tea. Highly recommended for tea. They're amazing. They, you know, black currants, kind of funky, almost like a little bit like weird, funky feet type of flavor. Some people think or smell, but the leaves in tea are an incredible floral flavor. Not like what you'd think from the smell. So these currants are coming along. I mean, you can see these things are loaded. Like, there's a ton of fruit in here, far more than we can eat. So we do sell some to local folks, We're bringing some to an ice cream maker down in the valley, probably this week. Um, these plants we reproduce very easily. Here's a failed one, almost they almost never fail. But you just take a current branch, tuck it into a pot, fill it with soil, scratch this a bit, cover it with a rock, hold it down like that. In just a month, you can cut this and have a new current plant. It'll be rooting out in six weeks, eight weeks, it's fully root out in the pot. Here's a pair, come along. Look at these guys. Looking beautiful. This is on Hawthorne. Now, excuse me, on mountain ash. See the tree here? The mountain ash. Pear grafted maybe five years ago, right here. And then grafted again. So we're turning this into. So the whole thing's pear now, except a little mountain ash shooting out. And then this was this year's pear, which took. And then I got excited and just wanted to show it to someone. So I opened it up. And it had started to heal, but hadn't fully healed. So lesson learned. Don't open, don't take the tape off too quickly. Here is a, uh, a pair that I didn't take the tape off and one out of two took. So this one I'll rip off. It's probably okay to have the tape come off now, but I'm gonna leave it just to be safe because I learned my lesson with that one. And you know, here it's starting to grow. This is an Asian pear. Next spring, we'll cut this here, this mountain ash shoot. The last of the gumi happening here. Just a, not many um, this year. It's still coming back from the dead. Um, but we're still, it's a beautiful plant. Beautiful fruit too. Very tasty. You gotta spit the pits out. Mm, you could eat them, but they're great. This died to the ground, super high in lycopene, which uh, is an important nutrient. And um, this died to the ground three winters ago. So this is only three years. Of growth, which in this climate is pretty amazing. Nitrogen fixer, related to Adamala, but different species. 